ever have one of those days? You know, it's closing time, you're ready to head out, and bam, in walks a customer who's not exactly thrilled with, well, something. Been there. Right. We've yeah. all been there. But what if, and this is what we're diving into today, what if those customer complaints, the ones that make you want to clock out five minutes early, those are actually secret opportunities to build some serious loyalty? That's what we're diving into. Yeah. And get this, our guide for this is a 1979 employee manual. From 1979? Yeah, 1979. From Wix, a building supply company. I know, I know you're thinking disco era, customer service, really. But trust me on this. This thing is shockingly relevant. It's pretty wild how much some things never change. Right. Customer satisfaction, no matter what year it is, totally important. And this guide, it's like opening a time capsule of great advice. Totally. And they even start with this scenario, a tired employee last minute customer, you can practically feel the tension. I feel like we've all been that employee. Oh yeah. And the thing is, even though it's from decades ago, it's still so relatable. Because deep down it's human psychology. Emotions, that's what drives us. You know, it doesn't matter if it's 1979 or 2024, a frustrated customer, they wanna feel heard. They wanna know that you get it. And this guide, it nails it, gives these five steps for handling complaints. And they're good. I mean, really useful even now. Five steps. Okay, now I'm really interested. So what's the first move? Let's crack open this 1979 playbook. What's step one? Step one, it sounds almost too simple, but it's listen. But, and here's the catch. It's not just about hearing the words. It's really listening, eye contact, you know, mirroring their body language a bit. Those little cues to show them you're really tuned in. You're with them. Exactly. So it's like you're saying, look, I see you, I hear you, this matters. That's it. Feeling heard, feeling understood. That's huge if you're frustrated. And it can really change the whole mood, make it easier to actually solve the problem. It's true. Okay, so we've listened. Now what? Right. So that brings us to step two. This one is about making sure the customer feels validated. Yeah. Accept their feelings. This is where it gets tough. Yeah. Because it's so easy to get defensive, you know, take it personally when someone's upset, even if you know logically it's not about you. It's hard not to. But here's the thing. It's not about you. It's about their experience, right? Mm -hmm. And if you just accept their feelings are valid, even if you don't love the way they're explaining it, it disarms the situation. It's like, I'm not saying you're right, but I get why you're upset. Yeah, you're acknowledging their perspective. Like taking the heat out of a fire before you try to put it out. Yes, exactly. So how do you actually start moving toward a solution? That is step three, and that's all about finding a little common ground agree with them. Wait, even if they're wrong? I know, right? I mean, it's not about being right. It's about building that bridge. You find that little piece, that sliver of something you can agree on, even if it's just that, hey, I get why this is frustrating. So instead of getting defensive, you're saying, I understand why you're frustrated. Exactly. It's like magic. It shows empathy, calms things down, and then you can talk. It's like you're on the same team right? working together. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm into it. So We've listened, we've shown them, we get it, found that common ground. What's next in our vintage playbook? Okay, so step four. This one is all about making sure everybody's on the same page, you know, making mm -hmm. sure everything's crystal clear. You clarify the complaint. So not just repeating it back to them like a parrot, but really like no. making sure you understand. You got it. You're demonstrating that you really were listening. Gotcha. So you might say something like, Okay, just so I understand this completely, you're saying. This is what's going on. Yes. Yes. Exactly. I like it. It prevents those misunderstandings later, gets everyone on the same page from the start. Okay, so we've listened, validated, agreed, clarified. What's the grand finale? What's step five in this customer service masterpiece? This is it. This is where the magic happens. Take action. Okay. We're moving from I understand to here's how we fix it. Right. And this is where speed matters. You want to be decisive. Because nothing makes you feel worse than telling someone your problem and they're just like <sighs> dragging their feet. The worst. So even if you don't have the answer right this second, you own it. You find the person who can help. You make it your mission to get it sorted. It's like that feeling of, okay, cool. I trust you're going to take care of this. Mm -hmm. Speaking of taking care of things, there's this part in the Wix guide that seems, I don't know, kind of extreme even for today mm -hmm. they talk about replacing a broken product oh yeah at cost even if it was totally the customer's bad wow is that like actually good business yeah. or is that just some you know nostalgic thing from a different time i know right sounds crazy 
But it all comes down to this idea called customer lifetime value. Okay. Customer lifetime value. <gasps> I've heard that. But honestly, I don't really know what it means. It's basically recognizing that a customer, they're not just one transaction. They represent potential profit over your whole relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Like, think about those companies. Amazon, right? Legendary customer service. Yeah. They bend over backwards because they know a happy customer, a loyal customer, that's worth like thousands over time. So you're saying you might take a small hit now to build that long-term loyalty. Exactly. That one generous act, even if it costs you a little bit up front, it can pay off big time. It's like they say, you got to spend money to make money. Right. Or in this case, spend a little generosity. A little kindness goes a long way. Who knew a dusty old manual from like the disco era could have such good advice? Right. It's not just about being nice. It's good business. Totally. And it's amazing how this, what is it, like a five-page guide from 1979 just sums it up. Choo -choo. Listen, make them feel heard. Find that common ground. Be clear. Take action. That's for recipe. It is for taking something bad and actually making it good. And when that happens, that's where the loyalty comes in. It really is. You hit the nail on the head earlier. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're Amazon or just starting out these little moments. They make a difference. Absolutely. Building those connections. This Wix guide, it's like a reminder that, yeah, business is business, but it's still people. It is every time. So as we wrap up this deep dive into customer service, let's flip the script. Think about a time you were the customer, right? You had a problem, you complained, but it was actually a good experience. Oh, I like this. What made the difference? What did they do? How did it make you feel? Every interaction, it's a chance to learn. You know, we can turn these, what are they, moments of frustration into something good. It's all about understanding the psychology, a little bit of strategy, maybe even a little trip back to 1979. A little disco wisdom never hurt. Exactly. And on that note, we'll leave you to ponder. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep those customer connections strong.